Lil Yachty was a joke. Do you guys want to watch this? Lil Yachty started off his career on a dreadful note. His very first interview made hip hop fans hate him for a few reasons. The first reason was this terrible freestyle. If I was on this beat, it would be spinning vinyl. They mad cause a nigga just went viral. They mad cause you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't hype me up like that. Cause then I have to, the next bar has to be better. Like, now the kid really selling. Uh, in high school, I never was failing. I think, I think, I think that's why they mad at me. They mad cause they trying to grab that. Hey. Hey, Max, stop. You can't. Oh, my fault. My, I got hype. You can't. You can't do that, right, though. All right, one more. Young nigga from the west side of town. Got a... I'm trying to think what to do. I don't know. I'm not a rapper. He should have pre-wrote some... This was trash. Oh, my fault. God, that is terrible. Lyrics to avoid the embarrassment. Then he followed that up by admitting he's not a rapper. But the worst part of the entire interview was at the very end. And the reason they so mad is because they think that the young kids don't take this hip hop thing serious. I honestly don't. <laughs> he honestly doesn't. <laughs> and he does it. It's called having fun. I'm sorry. You're just having fun, right? Yeah. That's it. And getting money. That's it. It's yeah. all money getting yeah, fun. Yeah, it's just, it's just, we're just chilling. Lil Yachty straight up saying he doesn't take hip-hop seriously and that it's just for money left a bad taste in the mouths of traditional rap fans. I don't understand why, motherfucker. That's the goal, bro. You know what I mean? That's the goal, bro. This was Yachty's grand introduction to mainstream hip-hop. Most people thought he was just another mumble rapper, someone who will be here and gone within a couple of years. What they didn't know is that Yachty was on a path of domination. Behind his nonchalant attitude was an extremely hardworking and talented artist. Today, hip-hop is in a dry, repetitive, and predictable spot, yet everything Yachty touches turns to gold. Today we are going to look at how Yachty was hated and disregarded, then every single thing he did to build back his reputation to become the secret weapon the music industry industry depends on today. It's important to consider this first interview took place on Hot 97. For decades, this radio station was an opportunity for rappers to broadcast their talents, their art to millions of New Yorkers, 50 which is was a the realist, bro. of hip hop. So his attitude wasn't just disrespectful to Hot 97, but hip hop as a whole. Hip hop fans ravaged Yachty online. They felt he didn't deserve to be on Hot 97 and he was a disgrace to the culture. But it wasn't just Yachty. All melodic trap artists face resistance. Future, Migos, Young Thug, Lil Uzi Vert were just some of the few that traditional hip hop fans thought were ruining the sound by simplifying it too much. Everybody trying to rap the same style with the, uh, I don't know who created it, if it was Future or Migos, but all them niggas sound the same. To make them even more mad, Yachty was added to the double XL freshman list. Just and that months. was he didn't even learn the first time. That it was trash. This whole thing was bad. Later, which is another huge stamp of approval from the music industry. The 2016 Double XL Freshman Cypher is an iconic piece of rap history that marks a distinct shift in not just the music, but the attitudes of mainstream rappers. Lil Uzi, 21 Savage, and Kodak Black borderline mocked the legacy of Double XL as they laughed and joked through their freestyles. And although Yachty was laughing with them, he actually took his freestyle more seriously. Mm. <laughs> It seemed like Gaudi didn't want to get bullied online by rap fans again. <sighs> but it's still so bad. I just, I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not a Yachty hater, but that motherfucker can't rap for shit. If we're being honest, that motherfucker can't rap at all. Honestly, like his his most recent track with Drake on it, he probably ruined the song. If I'm being honest with you, I'm sorry. It felt like he was trying to prove himself as a rapper. Turns out that was exactly right. Two weeks after the freshman cipher, Yachty dropped a song called Four Hot 97, along with his Summer Songs 2 mixtape. This track wasn't a diss but Ebro at Hot 97 took it that way when he tweeted the song. Lil Yachty and his team with these high school ass bars, followed by an Instagram caption that read, another Lil rapper caught feelings. Then Yachty responded, I didn't catch feelings, it was just to show that I can rap. It wasn't a diss to you, good sir, it was simply more like a check this. Actually, f Hot 97. Right. I'm not finna try to explain myself to no one dissing me. But it didn't stop there. Yachty called Ebro on Hot 97 Live and tried to explain. I didn't catch no feelings. It was to show what's good. And nigga, you, nigga, that shit is hard, bro. I, I don't care if you 69, bro. Like, <laughs> like, you know, like, Yo, f that, man. F that. These high school ass rappers, I'ma keep testing y'all. Although many people thought Ebro was being an old, sour hater, it seemed like they were able to laugh and have mutual respect for each other. But fans were not as quick to forget mm. Yachty, especially <clears throat> because during his Pitchfork interview, he said something that would haunt him for the rest of his career. Uh oh. Bill Yachty skip. said that the notorious B.I.G., one of the greatest rappers of all time, is overrated. What? He later doubled down and admitted he can't name five Tupac or Biggie songs. His <sighs> 
That just means you don't know. Oh, oh my God, Lil Yachty. Truly honest opinion about two rap legends made headlines across countless news outlets, continuing the same narrative that he is a disgrace to hip hop and should not be celebrated by the culture. But he didn't need their support because at this time, his song Broccoli peaked at number five on the Billboard Hot 100, as well as his viral 2015 hit One Night. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie up. to you, Broccoli is like the last time I heard about him, to be honest with you. I, I see him on like Kai Sinat stream, you know what I mean? I heard him on a Drake song, but like Lil Yachty's like only banger, I feel like it's Broccoli, no? I don't, I don't recall. I feel like he's in a class with like, like the Uzis, the X, you know what I mean? Ski Mask. And I feel like he's probably like in that whole like SoundCloud era. I feel like he's probably the worst rapper slash artist in that whole era. If I sound like a hater, bro, I'm sorry. Up to number 49 on Billboard. His debut mixtape Lil Bo, as well as Summer Songs 2. Oh, I spy. I spy with my little eye. I don't know. What do I need it? I just, I don't know. I feel like his flow or whatever. He's, he, he makes cool like vibey tracks, but like he's not a good rapper rapper at all or like music at all I'm, i don't know bro i don't know it's it's tough with that cult classics his music at the time can be described as carefree bubblegum rap with a heavy reliance on autotune but mm. others just called it mumble rap thanks to wiz khalifa we call it mumble rap Oh, so y'all got a name for it? Yeah, me and my homies. I mean, it ain't no disrespect to the little homies, but like they know what's up. They say that they don't want to rap, you know what I mean? But it's it's cool for now. It's going to evolve and I feel like those artists if they want to be around, they'll, they'll figure out the next thing to do. But right mm. now, that's what's popping. Although Wiz meant no harm by this term, it became weaponized by people who hated the new sound, such as Funkmaster Flex of Hot 97, a radio DJ who would often complain on his show about the new state of hip hop. Yachty once again felt like he needed to show these guys he could rap. Oh no. So he got on Ebro's Beats One radio show and spit some bars. Lucy Juicy, the jokes on you, I didn't grow up the boosie. All I care about is feeding my family and getting out of that camera. Funk Master Flex, please stop talking about me. Unless you finna play my song, then don't talk about me. What a bar. Mm, that's a bar. I'm, he just can't rap. It's okay, bro. It's okay. I can't do a lot of things. I can't read a fucking sentence properly. You know what I mean? Dyslexia. It just fucks me up. It's like he got like that for rapping though. Again, classic hip hop fans were not impressed. They still relentlessly called him trash in the comments. This man can't catch a break. They don't like the music he makes, but then when he switches it up, they still don't like it. This freestyle prompted Funk Flex to take another shot at Yachty. Uh-oh. That's cool, mother bars, nigga. You know nothing about that. You know why? Because you a mumble rapper, Bow Wow, a mumble rapper. <laughs> You don't know nothing about that. That's called motherfucking bars. Lil Yachty, you don't want nothing too. Neither you niggas want nothing. J. Cole dropped a song called <laughs> Everyone Dies, which seemed to take shots at Yachty. Bunch of words and ain't saying shit. I hate these rappers, especially the amateur eight week rappers. <laughs> Lil Whatever, just into the short, short bus, bus rapper. rapper. Mm. Yachty responded. I'll f with J. Cole, bro. Say I whatever you want to say. Jake. I mean, I don't listen. You to don't J. listen to J. Cole, but, but you f with J. Cole. Some people even. J. Cole is the goat, bro. I think his Born Center album, by far, probably my favorite album, hands down. I'm not gonna lie to you. Confronted Yachty to his face, like Joe Budden. I want you to know whether you're in a 360 or not. I want you to appreciate the culture that he was changed bugging. your life and took you from college dorm room eating f***ing oodles and noodles. I want you, who's well spoken and articulates himself well. My nigga. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> this moment was particularly interesting because Joe was the personification of all those hate comments and it was truly embarrassing to witness. By Yachty just mm -hmm. simply responding with chill, chill made people realize that hating on a that kid deep. who's just doing his thing is annoying and corny. Because boom, boom. Yachty just could not stop succeeding. He dropped a song alongside Kyle called I Spy, a nursery rhyme inspired bop that peaked at number four on the Billboard Hot 100. Made then a little followed pop that up with another hit, Peekaboo featuring Migos. His fans, who were primarily teens, loved his style. He was weird, he was fun, and he was unapologetically himself, which opened the door for three massive brand sponsorship deals with Target, becoming Huge. the lead creative designer at Nautica, and a Sprite commercial which remixed his song Cold Like Minnesota to Cold Like a Sprite Soda. And little Yachty here was paid by Sprite to write lyrics about Sprite. Cold like a Sprite Soda. It was reported that Yachty made a staggering $13 million during his extremely short career. Yachty was a supervillain to classic hip hop fans, but he truly was a sweet and kind hero to his fans. Unfortunately, his debut album would fall short of expectations. Teenage Emotions, released May 26, 2017, sold just 46,000 copies first week, peaking <clears> at number five on the Billboard Hot 200. When I first released my Teenage Emotions album, I thought that it was fire. Then the sales came back and I was devastated and so confused. Damn. I worked 
worked so hard. Honestly, the album was kind of bad. Little did he know, he already peaked musically. He would never have a more successful song than I Spy or Broccoli. True. And his music struggled to impress people outside of his fan base. His second album, I feel like, too. I feel like Lil Yachty's kind of like a Bruno Mars, bro. I'm sorry. I know Bruno Mars could sing and all that, but I feel like, like Bruno Mars doesn't have like crazy. He has like, what? A few hits Monkey. here and there, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Oh, like you know what I mean? Like like ah, catch a grenade, that shit. You know what I mean? Like like Bruno got that shit. Like fuck, oh, uh, like he just he got like hits, but like he don't got like like you ain't gonna put Yachty on and like vibe to him. You know what I mean? It's like some pop shit. Like you'll you'll go into okay, how about this? You'll go into a fucking uh a Hollister. Okay, I don't know why the fuck you shopping at Hollister. You get your money up, but like you go into a Hollister and you'll hear Lil Yachty playing. You know what I mean? Who sold sixty four thousand copies, but likely was inflated due to the incredible list of features. Quavo, NBA Youngboy, Lil Baby, Lil Pump, Trippy Red, just to name a few. And again, what happened to Trippy Red? He fell off lackluster. too. An ongoing conversation surrounding Yachty's music career is that he is carried by features or only has success with other artists on his songs. That's his fine, third bro. album, Nothing to Prove, speaks volumes about his attitude. It sold 40,000 in the first week and peaked at number 12 on the Hot 200. Hip Hop DX said he is bringing nothing new and it may be time for him to go back to the drawing board in search of new ideas before returning with a follow-up project. Most people fell in love with Yachty's music on his first two mixtapes because it was fun, cheerful, and positive. By his third album, he was slowly transitioning to fit in with the gangster rap status quo of the music industry. Don't get me wrong, he had a few bangers along the way. NBA Youngboat, Boom, Get Dripped, but they were buried in bloated albums of inconsistency consistent music. Mm -hmm. To make things even worse, his day one friends were switching up on him. The sailing team was Damn. a dynamic group of producers and artists surrounding Yachty. Cody Shane, J-Bands, Earl the Pearl, Big Brother Chubba, The Good Perry, Aaron Vercetti, and BU. None of them were even close to as successful as Yachty, but he says it's not his fault. The sailing team became like my brothers and sisters. Yeah. I kind of felt the need to kind of take care of them, right. you know, but it got to the point where I was spending so much money yeah. Like almost a million dollars trying Jeez. to like create this company out of my own money right, right. and they didn't want it for themselves you yeah know? that's like, not fair to, to him bro in a position to win he never had contracts with them never wanted any percentage of their success just wanted them to be the best versions of themselves but they see Lil yachty the thing like his music shit yeah but he's he's cool bro i feel like as an individual he's cool that's why like a lot of streamers fuck with him that's why he has like internet success you know what i mean it's because he's he's cool it's just like some of his music just shit sometime bro know what i mean but he has good vibes you you know what I mean? Dude's a nice dude. Yeah, like he got good vibes, bro. He has a good personality. Exactly, bro. I feel like that definitely could, like his character and personality carries his art more. Does that make sense? Simply did not want it. They were lazy. Trying to worry about seven other people's careers was holding Yachty back, so they decided to split up. 2019 and 2020 marks a major shift in Yachty's career. Let's his commercial success after this would be even less impressive, but he did not fall off. Mm. He started to observe the shifting landscape of hip hop. He kept a bird's eye view over the entire culture and tried to figure out how he could make an impact. Mm. What you are about to see is how Yachty may not have been doing impressive sales numbers, not selling out stadiums, not winning awards, but he kept his finger on the pulse of hip hop culture. His creativity had a massive impact on where hip hop is today, but where he started might shock you. With the uh -oh. rise of artists like Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, and Doja Cat, it was obvious the artists were in high demand. The City Girls were a duo from Miami buzzing with anthems like Period and Twerk. Yachty decided he would discover his inner baddie one night in oh, the no. studio and write a song for the City Girls after his friend Earl the Pearl made the beat, and out came their most successful record to date, Act Up. <laughs> but everything that... I've... His little zesty ass. See, maybe, maybe he don't need to do that gangster shit. He don't need to rap like boom bap shit, you know what I mean? He just need to tap into his inner bad bitch, you know what I mean? He is a little, he a little sassy ass, bro. I, I see it. Everyone is singing and all, and I wrote the whole thing. So you you were in there. Like, How did I come to you? Like you were just like I just, real I just, ass bitch. Get the fuck by the nigga. I just thought like them. I know what I women like, like to hear. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah. I'm, I, like I literally sent it. I was like, yo, what's just some raunchy shit? Act Up peaked at number 26 on the Billboard Hot 100 mm. and was a huge TikTok anthem that even young men couldn't resist dancing to. This track is still being played Gang. in the clubs today. Sorry. But it doesn't stop there. Act Up was Uh-oh. sampled by Megan Thee Stallion just a few months later in her song Hot Girl Summer. Earl also produced this beat and the song peaked at number 11 on the Hot 100, which was Megan's most successful song at this point. Female rappers were being encouraged to embrace their bossy, brazen nature and let it out on the song, which as we all know led to tracks like My Type, Savage, Big 
big energy, WAP, and it all started with the vision and lyrics written mm. by Lil Yachty. He proved he could have a bigger impact on the culture, so it was time to have one last hurrah before he changed up for good. Oh, crazy. Lil Boat 3 was the official Lil death of Yachty's previous music career. Now, the pandemic slowed everyone's lives and careers down. Yachty achieved his lifelong dream of collaborating with Drake on the song Oprah's Bank Account, which brought that carefree Yachty energy his fans once loved. He did bring that energy throughout the Lil Boat 3 project, but it was honestly his harder rap songs like Split Whole Time, TD, Part of Me, and West Side that stole the show. With just a mere 30,000 copies first week, mm. Yachty himself and his fans needed a revival of his career, and that's just what they got. After LB3, a new Lil Yachty emerged. The nonchalant, goofy, and emotional teenage persona he had was behind him. The new Yachty was calm, collected, and moved like a boss. He stopped dyeing his hair, got rid of the beads in his braids. Mm. He still wore colorful attire, but it was now tasteful and sleek. Mm. He was focused, but still hungry. He started a nail paint brand called Crete, understanding that young Gen Z men painting their nails is normalized and mm. don't have a product marketed towards them. Concrete Dang. Boys My became fault. the name of his newfound imprint record label and his first signee, Draft Day, an upcoming artist from Broward County, Florida. Yachty's song Coffin Thank reflects you. a shift in his sound that would be celebrated and copied by many artists after him, mm. then hit about it with Kodak Black, then Cortex. Yachty found his flow. He wasn't trying hard to impress the old heads, and he wasn't the childish auto-crooning singer. He found he himself, bro. The perfect middle. His mm. beats were more unique than ever, and you could tell he had a chip on his shoulder, but also couldn't care less if you f***ed with him or not. His energy was contagious. True. He recorded an entire album with a bunch of rappers from Detroit, Michigan just to show love and embrace the sound that was taking over underground rap. Although some were surprised, Yachty has always showed love to new artists. Just look at his history of collaborating with buzzing talent. He was on Lil Baby's first album before he blew up. He made a hit with T Grizzly, D to the A, in 2017. Mm. He even did Gucci flip flops with Bad Baby in 2018. Maybe when... he's just really good at like, you know what Drake does? Like when he sees an artist coming up and he just hops on it before like anyone else sees, you know what I mean? And then he makes a fucking banger. Like maybe he's just good at like scouting and talent yeah bro and like hopping on it dot, 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 no okay okay like for example like streaming shit as well like people do that with streaming motherfuckers like when people are starting to slowly come up like other big streamers that don't really have like too much buzz around their name will go latch on to those smaller streamers and then that way like like it's the same way like bigger bigger artists or bigger streamers why the fuck am i doing that nobody would champion her music even drewski the biggest comedian to come from the social media era his first major collaboration was a skit with lil yachty in 2019 babyface ray baby Tron, Baby Smooth are just three of the many Detroit artists bringing a fresh sound to hip hop. Their cadence is smooth yet savage, Monkey. and the beats are bouncy. Okay. They jam pack these songs with bars. Yachty teamed up with them as well as other buzzing Michigan artists on his album Michigan Boy Boat. This album only sold 15,997 copies in the first week, and fans were confused by Yachty's decision, but he said, I just wanted to show love. That's it. I just wanted to show love to all of those guys and their talent, and I feel like I rap my best on those types of beats. A rapper who doesn't care about numbers, who is able to move based on creativity- He's the Keith Lee of rapping! ...and art, while constantly being on the mm. forefront of the next wave, is dangerous. Boat had something up his sleeve. He continued to steamroll ahead with bangers like YAE Energy and rock climbing with buzzing rapper Remble. At the same time he was rapping his ass off, he dabbled in polar opposite genres with tracks like Love Music and Breathe Deeper with Tame Impala. He felt inspired by the psychedelic rock sound and announced that he will be ditching rap for his next album. Uh oh. It's gonna be mid as hell. All his stuff be weak. Uh -oh. Can't wait to see it flop like his last album. The negativity towards his expansion did not hold him back. He stayed low key kept his head down, and got to work. Just be he also developed bro. a very close relationship with the biggest rapper in the game, Drake. Drizzy posted on IG saying, More life to my fellow brother Yachty. Happy we are locked in for a lifetime. Followed by a picture of them on a jet and Yachty branding a tattoo of Drake's OVO label on his... <sighs> demonic. Something demonic. I don't know, bro. I don't know. It's kind of scary. I, I really enjoy my friends. I don't think I will get a tattoo of any of their shit on me. I'm not going to lie to you. Wrist. But this relationship started with Yachty being a super fan of Drake. I've for a very long time wanted to just do anything involving music with him so like i kind of like been telling him for the last like i don't know how many years like bro Damn. i don't 
Can I just you like, need to start hitting the gym, I, bro. Can I even just be in a room? Drake has always been at the forefront of pop culture for the past 15 years. How I mean, I don't, I don't know how busy he is, but like, chat, I'm not gonna lie to you. If I was like a millionaire, bro, I don't, I don't give a fuck about Like, fuck everybody, bitch. I'm not buying no one's shit. I'm gonna get me a chef. I'm gonna make sure they got some nice, fresh ingredients. I'm gonna get me the craziest trainer. I mean, I don't need a trainer. I know how to fucking work out. But I'm saying, like, I will get me the craziest trainer. I'll be the in most insane shape ever, bro. You know what I mean? Like, you see, you see what Kevin Hart does, bro. You ever watch Kevin Hart stories? That motherfucker was just out here boxing for no reason, just doing stupid shit that's what i would do you know what i mean i would invest in myself you see what i'm saying because this is by surrounding himself with young talent that will pioneer the next wave drake conveniently became yachty's best friend when yachty had his hands around the neck of the culture he helped executive produce drake's mm. next album her loss alongside 21 savage yachty is credited as a producer on four songs each of which are some of the more euphoric and memorable beats on the record memorable. he's also the one who sourced the cover art some people say he is the genius behind this record mm. and by mid 2022 yachty was finally being appreciated for the genius he is. This is probably the hardest walkout, I'm not gonna lie to you. If we're being honest. No, 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 X, X's walkout goes crazy, but this one right here. Mmm. Mmm. Hey, hey. <laughs> And just before Yachty decided to release his psychedelic album, he went viral by accident. It's important to know that there is a huge community of rap fans who actively try to hack into artists' computers and phones to leak so their weird. music. However, one hacker straight up asked Yachty for the Poland record after he heard a snippet, and this is what happened. You have this song called Poland, bro. Please, bro, send it to me. And at the time, I'm like, bro, no one gives a fuck about my leaks, right? Like. Well, I'll send it to him. Like, nothing's gonna happen. So I send it to him. Well, Yachty was on. Once TikTok users heard his wiggly, wobbly vocal vibrato, the memes started pouring in. <laughs> Rap has been in a long dry spell, so anything different was bound to get some attention. A lot of people treated the song as a joke. Others genuinely loved it. Yachty was kind of upset when it went viral because he didn't really like the song and he wanted to debut the wobbly vocal style on his psych rock album. But the fact that his throwaway songs he never wanted to release were going viral let him know that he was on top. <laughs> and with that buzz, he finally released the psychedelic alternative rock album called Let's Start Here, Ooh. which could easily be one of the best Best albums of 2023. Huh? Like his other albums, he only sold what? What year are we in? Bitch, we in 2023 right now. I never heard a f song off this shit. Sold 36,000 copies the first week, but there was nothing but. I gotta go listen to this shit. Praise for his efforts on this album. The instrumentation was beautiful, bright, funky, and soulful, but also broke to periods of eerie trepidation. His use of heavy auto tune and big room reverb felt like you were ascending towards the heavens on a trip. This will probably go down as one of the best genre transitions for a rapper in history. Mm. And the crazy Craziest part about it, he went right back into rapping after dropping this album and dropped banger after banger after banger. Strike, slide, solo stepping creep boy, Tesla. Go on TikTok and you will quickly see someone sharing one of these songs. Yachty has. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I, I don't know. Every time I listen to Yachty rap, it just sounds like he's trying to chase the beat. He's like, he's like one step above Blueface. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? I don't know though, bro. Maybe I gotta re-listen to him. He released music. I don't even know about it, Loki, but never been this consistent in his entire career. And he knows just how much the rap game needs him, which he expressed on his track with J. Cole. Allegedly, they figured out that I'm the secret recipe. The standards have collapsed. They wrote me in with lames. They treat me like I'm them. The hate I overcame. Refused Refuse to pat my back, refuse to shake my hand, refuse to give me props when I'm not around, refuse to act mm. like I ain't shift the sound, like I ain't pushed the culture. Mm. These bars encapsulate everything I said in this video. They hated Yachty. He kind of spitting though. Just another mumble rapper that would fall off. Though. They didn't give him any respect, and instead of tucking his tail, he worked his ass off. Now with hip hop being incredibly dry and boring, Yachty is one of the only ones bringing something fresh. Hip hop now needs Lil Yachty. I respect it. I respect it, bro. I got a new perspective on it and I respect it. W video, I like that video.